Well, my name is Sean Poulier. I'm a solicitor advocate, and we're in the holding area of Blackfriars Crown Court, which is now closed. Um, and what happens here for a start of a court day for a defendant in custody is that these huge doors open and a prisoner will be brought in a prison van uh, and the van will be driven through onto this huge disc and the purpose of this is when the van can, the van can then turn back around and go out for the next van to come in. But an individual prisoner will come out of the van, they'll be handcuffed to a prison officer uh, and you can imagine how frightening it is for their first experience of a Crown Court to come into this large area and they'll be escorted in handcuffs through this area into this hallway awaiting a greeting from a series of prison officers whose first job will be to search them. And it is uh, probably a, quite a daunting experience if you've never experienced it before. So through this big metal door and they'll be stopped straight away, unhandcuffed, and from there they'll be searched. And the prison officers will be looking for weapons primarily, but possibly drugs, cigarettes, any contraband. Because the idea is that nobody should be coming from a prison carrying anything other than themselves and their clothing. But that isn't always the case, and so for obvious reasons they have to be searched. And once that search is complete, <clears throat> any property they would have had with them, their property from prison, their bags, their personal belongings, are put away in a cupboard until the end of proceedings, and then they will be taken into a cell. And um, in the court, there'll be a number of cells, uh, possibly 20 or more. Uh, so usually enough for one person per cell, but on a very busy day, you may have to double up and share with somebody else. And that person, well, you better hope you get on with that person because you'll be potentially with them all day. And here we are, they're taken through this hallway, this here, and placed into one of these cells. This is cell number 11, and it's a pretty uninviting space, uh, very sterile, just a wooden bench. And the prison staff unhandcuff you, take you in here, and slam the door behind you, like so. And then you're sat on this pretty uncomfortable bench, waiting. Well, the next time this door opens for a defendant is probably when they get to see their lawyer and the jailer will come in, um, handcuff them, so again, a pretty impersonal experience, and they'll be escorted in handcuffs through these gates and through a doorway which leads to consultation rooms. And obviously the purpose of that is to allow a, a defendant to speak to their lawyer in private, in confidence, before the court proceedings. Right, it's hoped that a lawyer will explain to them what's going to happen at court that day and a defendant will hopefully provide instructions as to what they would want to happen that day. And um, these rooms are pretty secure. Again, big heavy metal doors. Um, and usually the lawyer, someone like myself, will be sitting in this room and I'll sit in a chair, a bolted down chair no less, and the defendant will be sat... Um, any chair, uh, but probably the one furthest away, and there'll be introductions by me as to who I am, if they haven't met me before, and I'll explain what's going to happen at court today. And um, depending on the level of trepidation a defendant has, that conversation can take a long time or it can be quite quick. A lot depends on how much understanding a person has of the legal system. So after the legal consultation, uh, a suspect is taken back into the cell, again in handcuffs, and there they wait until their case is called on. The lawyer will usually be waiting around in the courtroom for the case to be called on as well, and there'll be a tannoy saying all parties in the case of John Smith to court number one. And then that suspect will be taken from their cell in handcuffs along this corridor where they have these security alarms in case something should go wrong. Uh, so if a, jailer thinks that the suspect's going to escape or something of that description, they'll whack this bar and the place will be flooded with security officers. And um, that doesn't happen very often, thankfully. The suspect will be brought through, the defendant will be brought through into this holding area again. And you can see how intimidating it is. It's cold, concrete walls. Down these stairs, in handcuffs the whole way, these, by the way, are defendants who are innocent until proven guilty. 
although they won't feel very innocent in handcuffs going through this procedure. And here they'll wait into a, in a holding area. And this is a holding area with a bench. And there are two courtrooms either side of this holding area, but the defendants in custody will be taken into this court here. This is court number one at Blackfriars Crown Court. <clears throat> and there, or here, they're asked to sit down and wait to be identified. And they're behind these security screens so they can't escape. They can't hear very much. Uh, very commonly, defendants say, I can't hear what's going on. And eventually, they'll be asked to stand up, identify themselves, and then they'll sit down again on a bolted chair and listen to the proceedings. And hopefully, they'll pick up what's going on. Their lawyers are faced, facing the judge, so they can't easily hear what the lawyers are saying. And the judge will be facing them. Hopefully, the defendant will be able to pick up what the judge is saying. And at the end of proceedings, uh, maybe an administrative hearing, could be a trial, could be a sentence. Um, they'll be asked to stand up again. If they're sentenced, the sentence will be passed down upon them. And then they'll go back through that door to await their fate in prison. Right, the last time you saw me, I was standing behind uh, that glass shield, which is the dock. Uh, pretty much in the position that the defendant would be seated. But me, in my job, I would be sat in the well of the court in this outfit, my gown and my wig, which I'm required to wear in order to address the court. If I don't wear it, the court won't listen to me, won't hear me, is the term. And so we are all required to wear wigs and gowns, except in exceptional circumstances. And um, then I address the judge, and the defendant will be behind me. I'll have my back to the defendant. Hopefully the defendant will hear and understand everything that I've said on and will say on his behalf. That isn't always the case. The prosecution is sat next to me. Once again, uh, addressing the judge. Hopefully the defendant can hear the prosecutor and all the things that the prosecutor will say about the defendant. And if we're in a trial setting, I'll cross-examine witnesses from this point. And the defendant's all the way over there, so not, it's not easy for him to communicate or her to communicate with me. So I hope that all the instructions I've taken are sufficient for me to cross-examine witnesses. If it's a sentence hearing, it's slightly different, just the judge to contend with, and I'll address the judge mitigating on the defendant's behalf. Again, the defendant can't easily draw my attention to mistakes I may have made. Hopefully I haven't made any. Uh, and my job is to try and achieve the best possible outcome for the defendant hopefully avoiding a lengthy prison sentence, allowing him or her to go back to their family. But of course that will all depend on how serious the case is and how merciful the judge is feeling on any given day. <laughs>